caught it just a little thick and fortunate that he didn't cannon into the red a little bit thicker. But this time I'm sure he'll take this red on. He's just having a look to see if the black will go into that right corner pocket. If it does, all his eggs will be in that basket. Here we go then. Great pot. One. And yes, it's potable, this black. <laughs> Not easy by any means. And you could play it a little slow cannon to the red directly above the black. Deep screw, slow. Lovely. Played it well. Eight. Black. I think we'll pop to the right corner. Although I don't think he can hold for it from there. Well, he tried Nine. to. Lots of left-hand side to check the cue ball. You can see what a talent this guy is 16. when he gets in amongst them. He's a very natural player. Great eye. A little bit rough around the edges 70. in terms of his match play, but that will come, I'm sure, with greater experience of the big occasion. Very nicely held for the red. That was some shot he just 24. played there. 25. This is it. 32. So this is his fifth black. Oh, where's that cue ball? Well, I think he can still pop 40. the red to the left middle. Come down for the black. Sure. 41. Tepshire has never made a 147. His highest break, 141, a couple of years ago in the European Tour. I've got a feeling he'll be thinking about it, even though it's still early days. <coughs> Not least because there's a small matter of a cheque for £40,000 on offer for anyone who makes one this week. Well, it's a great chance this, you know. The Reds are split nicely. Oh, he's missed 49. it. Oh, I thought he had. I thought it was a high. One thing he can't afford to beat is careless because... As things stand, he's nowhere near over the finishing line yet, and that's the most important thing in this frame. And if he were to miss, he'd back Robertson to clear up. 56. Maximum concentration required. 57. And that's where he needs to leave the cue ball each time so he can manoeuvre it to any red he wants. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Seventy-five remaining, so this black 
and a red. And he'll make the frame safe. So now... 72. It's all about the break. Doesn't he, he look good in amongst the balls? 73. Yeah. Maybe play a little cannon to the middle of those three reds. Nicely played again. Ten reds, ten blacks. And nothing safe. Mark Selby missed the 13th black in his match against Oliver Lyons, and it was a very easy one. Might be able to take the red to the middle. 88. This is some break from Tap Giant. Swift as well. He's just getting down and knocking them in, isn't he? <laughs> Somebody should tell him he's on a maximum. 96. Playing as though he's down his local club. What natural talent this lad has. 97. Well, Steve Davis famously said once that the key to success at the highest level in this great game is to play as though it means nothing when actually it means everything. And that's what Tepshire is doing in this break. Not straightforward this time though. <laughs> Made sure it was the right side, so that's the century. 104. The crowd know what's going on. They're living every shot with him. Overcooked it. Oh, this is going to be it. Well, the black's hard enough, but to get onto the red in a way to get back to the black, big ask. That's a great shot on the black. Oh, slow down. 112. He can see just enough, but this would be some shot. Would it ever? I wouldn't put it past him, though. Oh, what a shot! What a shot! Come on! We can do it. What a shot that was on that red. Has there ever been a better one during a 147? I doubt it. Fabulous. Can he finish the job? Everyone is willing him on. Even the players on the neighbouring tables can't take their eyes off this. Green only goes to one pocket. Shot. Keep running. Keep running. One hundred and twenty-five. Superb. Now oh, the only problem is that pink off of its spot. They've all stopped to look. Slow down. Slow down. Now, which way to play it? Stun off the cushion, come in behind it. And play for the pink into the right corner. He's played for the pink in the right corner. Keep running, keep running. Beautiful. Two balls away from making a slice of snooker history here at the UK. And you will not see a better maximum break than this. It has been sublime. Can he finish it? Nerves must be jangling. You wouldn't think so to look at him. Don't overstretch, Tep Giant. Yes, it's there. Oh, deep breath. Deep breath. He'll be shaking. His heart will be pounding. Don't rush it. Oh, he's missed.
lost it. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, what a crying shame. He did rush it, I'm afraid. It was a rush of blood. He didn't settle himself on that shot. He threw his cue at it, and he is crestfallen. And you have to feel for the poor young man, because that was the most brilliant break you could wish to see. And he's fallen at the final hurdle, and it's cost him £40,000. First time I um, knew I, have, I was make 15 black and clear all the color except the last black. <laughs> First time for me, never, I um, never did 147 like this before in the big tournament, in the big game with Neil Robertson. Yeah. Made me too much pressure for the last break. He's made that unbelievable break in like six or seven minutes or something. He's, and he's missed the black. I feel, you know, I feel really terrible for him because, um, you know, the, the prize money would have meant, you know, quite a lot to him as well. Um, being an overseas player would have helped, really helped with his expenses for the next couple of years. If I pot, pot, pot the red, I have jackpot. Sensational! Sensational! So, am I concentrate? Not concentrate about the black one. I, I, I concentrate about the, how how I'm going to do later. How that why I made the black. Oh! Wow. You know, once you missed it, I have to try and focus on my game, and then you know, next round I've made one four five. So obviously, you know, very delighted with that, but. Um, yeah, I don't know, it was just, uh, yeah, I, I still, still feel bad for him now. Every time you watch it, you keep willing that black to go in. <laughs> a very good afternoon to the chairman of Snooker's governing body, Jason Ferguson. Jason, good afternoon. When did you get the text to say, we've just missed a 147? Well, somebody sent me a message last night with a, with a picture of the black that he missed, and, uh, you know, first thoughts, of, uh, I think from every player would say, th first thoughts to Thepchire, you know, how does he feel after that? Um, Devastated, I'm sure, but uh, what a fantastic player he is. He's, uh, he must take some good from that. That red he potted, as described by John Virgo, as sensational, was indeed sensational. Yeah, in incredible. I mean, especially at that point, you know, 14 reds, 14 blacks, uh, and to be left with a shot like that. But not just that, the black before um, was, you know, an, equally an incredible shot, and, and obviously had no idea where the cue ball was going to finish. But um, what, a, what a terrific break, really. And, and with the greatest respect to Teb Chaya, there will be many people who are watching this right now and watched it yesterday, never, ever heard of him. And yet we've got another player now coming onto the scene for you as chairman of the governing body. That must be absolutely wonderful. It is, and I think it's testament to where snooker is today as a global sport. You know, we've uh, Teb Chaya, obviously, from Thailand. We've got many players now coming from many new countries, and very pleased to see Tepchai play into this level and, and we, we've all you know as, as players and as administrators we've seen how good he is and um, it's, we're very pleased to see him this far in the UK Championship. Ken's gonna hate this moment <laughs> how does it feel? To miss uh, well I know exactly how he feels <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he will uh, it might take him a long time to get over it and possibly he'll never get over it because I, I still have nightmares over the one I miss and people like the BBC, will never let me get over either. <laughs> 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 you haven't been into the vault and destroyed the tape. That was the Masters I, in 2000. I thought his black was a lot easier than mine. <laughs> was that the Masters in 2000? I was in the Masters in 2000. Did you go to he, bed that night? Thinking, Did you go to sleep? He was thinking of the money. I was thinking about how am I going to get this car back to Dublin? I'll have to drive to Hollyhead, go on the boat, go across. That was all going through my mind. No, but uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was gutted for him. To be honest, I would have loved to have seen him uh, get it because it's a fantastic achievement, and not just for the money. The money would have been great for him, as Neil Robertson said. But just the history of this tournament to make it one for seven on TV, he'd be forever remembered for. And now he's going to be forever remembered for the wrong reasons. But look, he's a great player, and I said to him, "Don't worry about it. You'll have lots of sleepless nights." But Look, go out and do it again, you know? Yeah. Go out and get one to the next one or, or something.